this is just more of what we were doing on page 11. 11 don't forget P M D A S parentheses multiplication division addition and subtraction remember that multiplication division it doesn't matter what order you do them in and it's the same with addition and subtraction doesn't matter what order you doing them doing them do, do them in make sure that you do the parentheses first okay so here we got our parentheses and inside our parentheses we have one half minus one third to be able to combine these uh, two terms or two fractions we've got to find the common denominator so let's find the common denominator first before we do anything else do exactly what I'm doing okay I'll give you a minute to get it done draw your two fraction your parentheses your two fraction lines and your subtraction sign in between okay now we're gonna find the common denominator okay the common denominator is the number that both 2 and 3 are factors of. Okay? The number that both 2 and 3 are factors of. Do you remember what factors of are? Well, um, if I say factor 4, that means that I want you to find a, I want you to find all the numbers that when you multiply them together equal 4. So the factor the factors of 4 are 4 and 1 and 2 and 4 and 2 and 2. I'm sorry. Cuz when I multiply 4 and 1 together, I get 4. And when I multiply 2 and 2 together, I get 4. So these are all factors of 4. 4, 2, and 1 are all factors of 4. So we need to find a number that both 2 and 3 are factors of. And um, my brain tells me that the numbers that 2 and 3 are factors of is 6. Because if I was to find all the factors of 6, I would get 6 times 1 is a factor of 6. 6 and 1 are factors of 6 because 6 times 1 equals 6. And then 3 times 2 are factors of 6 because 3 and 2, 3 times 2 equals 6. So um, since 2 and 3 are factors of 6, 6 is going to be my common denominator. And whatever I did to the 2 to turn it into 6, I've got to do to the numerator. So what I did to the 2 was I multiplied it by 3 to turn it into 6. So I'm going to have to multiply a numerator by 3. Whatever I do to the denominator, I have to do to the numerator. So since I multiply denominator by 3, I'm going to multiply numerator by 3, and that's going to give me 1 times 3 is 3. Now, whatever I did to this denominator to get 6, I've got to do the numerator. I multiply this denominator by 2. So 3 times 2 equals 6, so I'm going to multiply a numerator by 2, and 2 times 1 is 2. Now that I have the common denominator, I could do what's inside the parentheses. So what I have is... 2 equals 2 over 3 minus 3 minus 2 is 1 and I don't do anything to the denominators it stays the same so 1 over 6 okay now um, I've got to just remove the parentheses so I've got 2 over 3 minus 1 over 6 now again before I can combine these fractions I've got to find the common denominator so do exactly what I do draw a fraction line a subtraction sign then a fraction line this fraction line is for this fraction subtraction sign is for this subtraction and this fraction line is for this fraction here so I've got to find a number that when I multiply that are a number that both 3 and 6 are factors of so this is what I do look at the bigger number and ask yourself is 3 a factor of 6 in other words does anything times 3 equal 6? Yeah. 2 times 3 equals 6. And 6 is a factor of itself, obviously, because 6 times 1 equals 6. So our common denominator is going to be 6. Because both 3 and 6 are factors of 6. Now, what did I multiply the 3 by to turn it into 6? What did I multiply this 3 by to turn it into 6? I multiplied it by 2. What did I multiply... So whatever I multiply the denominator by, I have to multiply the numerator by. So since I multiply the denominator by 6, by 2, I've got to multiply the numerator by 2. So what's 2 times 2? 4. What did I multiply this denominator by to turn it into 6? Well, 1. 1 is the factor uh, that will give me 6. So 6 times 1, what I multiply the denominator by, I have to multiply the numerator by. So um, what I get is 1 times 1 equals 1. So you notice my numerator doesn't change because my denominator didn't change. Now I can combine and find the answers. What's 4 minus 1? 3. 
And this, the denominators don't change, so it's 3 over 6. Now, this fraction can be reduced because there is a number, a common factor for both of these. And the common factor is 3. 3 is a common factor for both of these. So we're going to divide both of these, the numerator and the denominator, by 3. Uh, 3 divided by 3 is 1, and 6 divided by 3 is 2, because 3 times 2 equals 6, and 3 times 1 equals 3. So um, my answer is 1 over 2. This is my final answer. Um, I chose to do this problem instead of the other ones because this one was a little more difficult. Okay. Now number 14 is another uh, problem with fractions, but this one's a little less complicated because you don't have to find the common denominator. So here, remember, you have to follow your order of operations, PIMDAS, parentheses, multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. It doesn't matter what you do first, addition or subtraction. It doesn't matter what you do first, multiplication or addition. As long as you do multiplication or addition before you do the addition and subtraction. And before, and before you do anything, you've got to do what's inside the parentheses first. So we've got 7 over 8 plus, now we're going to do what's inside the parentheses first. 7 minus 3 is 4 over 8. Now we're going to add, what's 7 plus 4? 11 over 8, because 7 plus 4 equals 11, right? 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Now what we have here, whenever the numerator is bigger than the denominator, um, it's called an improper fraction. Whenever the numerator is within the denominator, it's called an improper fraction. So you've caught, you have to turn this into a mixed number. You have to turn this improper fraction into a mixed number. Okay. The way you do that is by dividing 11 divided by 8. Ask yourself, how many times does 8 go into 11? Well, 8 goes into 11 one time because of, I try to multiply 8 times 2, I'm going to get 16, and that means that eight that it's going to be over 11. So it has to be a number that does not go over 11. So 8 times 1 equals 8. If I would have done 2, then it would have been 16. It would have gone over 11, so I can't use 2. And my remainder is whatever I, how many I need, whatever the difference between 8 and 11. So... The difference between 8 and 11 is um, 3, so my numerator is 3 over 8. That's how I find the improper, fra the, the, that's how I turn the improper fraction into a mixed number. Um, I ask myself, again, let me explain this to you. I ask myself, how many times does 8 go into 11? Or what's 11 divided by 8? If I go like this. 11 divided by 8. If I put a 2 up here, it would be over six. It would be over 11. So it can't be a 2. I've got to put a 1. And 1 times 8 is 8. And the difference between 11 and 8 is 3. So that makes 3 my remainder. Well, my remainder is also my new numerator. Okay? And the denominator, which is 8, stays the same. I hope you understood that. Do the rest of the problems by yourself. Okay? If you need help, just ask me in class.